Welcome to Grade 9, this is Lesson 4.5. Today we're going to talk about using graphs to estimate values. When you plan for the future, it's pretty hard because you never know what's going to take place. So you have to take into consideration many factors that are not easy to predict. However, it has to be done. Planning for housing, road use, hospitals, Medicare, uh, assisted living for the old elderly, or just to name a few. Ever wondered how they figure out when to build these things before it becomes a problem? Well, this is one of the things that they do here. We're going to gather information about the topic first. And to do that, you have to look into the history. So here's an example I've created. If Edmonton wanted to know what amount of parking was acquired for the Fringe Festival, they would gather information over the several years and take a look at how much parking that they had. And I've created this information as totally and completely fake. In 2002, they had 6,000 parking spaces that were used for the Fringe. In 2004, there was 6,750. In 2006, there was 7,500. And 2008, they used 8,250. What we want to know is, if they were going to do something, and we know the next couple of years, 2010, 2012, 14, 16, and, and so on, how would they know how many parking spots to create or how many would be required and when they knew this they could take it into consideration when they're designing their infrastructure so here i made a graph a graph of parking spots in the fringe and you can see it starts here boom 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 for the four years and you notice that they are not drawing with a line because you cannot have data between here you can't have 1.5 parking spots you either have a parking spot or you don't so this is discrete it's linear because in grade nine we only do linear stuff and we have to take a look at this and make some decisions about it. So Edmonton can use this information to find out how many parking spots were used, the amount of money that could be generated from charging those parking fees, and whether or not it would be wise to create more parking spots. Now there's two terms we have to know about. First one's called interpolating, and the second one's called extrapolating. We've talked about these terms earlier, but interpolating is defined as estimating a value that lies between data points on the graph. So to go back to our, our graph right here, interpolation means that what we're going to do is we're going to work with this stuff right here. Whatever's on the graph, that's what interpolation is. So we could find out any information along this, this pathway. So if you want to know what happened in 2003, you could use it, 2009, possibly 2010. Uh, these are all what we call interpolations. So the definition down here is this is when you read graph and get information off the graph between the points that are on that graph. So you take a look here and ask the questions. For example, you would interpolate to find the parking spots which were needed in 2003. So we can go back here, 2003, grab our lines, go over here, 2003 is halfway through, so we would go up to right about there and then we would go over and you can see that we have roughly somewhere in that neighborhood there um, this is 7,000 this is 6,000 so we're somewhere around halfway between six and seven thousand and then I actually made the graph up so I can give you the exact number that's required and that is 6,375 now extrapolating is when you go beyond the graph that's there so for example this one here is limited we only go to 2008 Right? And we only start at 2002. So extrapolating is when you go outside this graph and you grab information from down here or off the graph there. That's extrapolating, which means it's external. All right? So external is extrapolating. Interpolation, interpolating is internal. So you can use those two things, the beginnings of them, the prefixes, to help you keep track of which one's which. So extrapolating is defined as estimating a value that lies outside the data points on a graph. This is a prediction of an unknown value from known values. So you take what you know and you extend it. If you says here, it says here, for example, we would extrapolate to estimate the number of parking spots needed for 2010. So here's 2010 right here. All right, so here's 2010. You'd go up. I'll go outside here to see it. All right, and we're going to be somewhere on that line. Maybe I'll put a line there just to, to help us out with extrapolation. You can see that right now, it looks like we're coming right around the area of 9,000. 
and the real actual value is 9,000. Now, the thing about extrapolations and interpolations is you have to make some assumptions that are going to take place. Now, for us in grade 9, the biggest assumption we have to make is that the data is going to increase or decrease in a uniform or regular interval because we have to have linear data. In grade 10, 11, and 12, you're going to be introduced to the different types of graphs where we have curves, and those are exponential graphs and stuff like that, which use uh, powers of 2 and all that kind of stuff. So that data will be in grade 10, but for us, we have to take a look at what's taking place on the graph, the internal stuff, and then we project that into the future. And we have to use what it decreases by over an amount. So, for example, if you take a look here, it says, um, is this example we had, is it linear? Yes. Here's the thing that I want you to take a look at. Every two years, we go up by 750. Right? So, two years, it increases by 750. Two years went up by 750. Two years went up by 750. Two years went up by 750. So, if I want to go to 2012, I take the 9,000 and add 750 to it. Here's another example. This one sometimes, oh sorry, sometimes you're given an uh, example and you don't have a graph. It just gives you um, the increase per year and you can use that to make a prediction. In 1998, gasoline cost 55 cents per liter. In 2008, it was $1.05 per liter. Predict the price of gasoline in the year 2018. Well, since the gas prices went up by 50 cents per liter every 10 years, we assume that the same rate of change, it should cost 50 cents more 10 years after that. So we have to go to the 2008, uh, 2008 and it's going to cost 50 cents more. So we're assuming that in 2018, it would be $1.55. Now, remember I told you you have to be careful about assumptions and stuff you make? Uh, this is a linear example, right? And it, it, it's, it's going up by 50 cents every 10 years. That's not really a great way to do this because uh, we know the gas fluctuates up and down depending on what's happening in the world. You know, if we have a, an oil crisis, the prices go way up. And, you know, if, having, if the oil crisis is not there, then the it comes down. Like, for example, uh, right now, as I'm sitting here in, in 2020, uh, I just gassed my vehicle up and it was 97 cents a liter. So it's not quite the increases as, we, as we're expected. So is this an interpolation or an extrapolation? Well, the internal data would be 0.5, 5 here, and 1.05 there. So we have from 0.55, or 55 cents in, in uh, 1998, to $1.05 in 2008. This is internal here, but we've gone, and we want to know what about 2018. So in this case, it's outside the data, so this is what we would call an extrapolation. Now, is our prediction linear? Yes, it is, simply because we are going to increase by, uh, it says here we increase by 50 cents each year, each 10 years, sorry. So, 5 cents a year as you go up. Okay, let's look at our next example. Bob borrowed money off his rich Aunt Petunia, and the following is a graph of how he is paying it back. So take a look here, you'll see that we've got months on the bottom, and this is going up by every two months. On the side, we're having an increase by 2,000 each time. And if you look here, you'll notice that there's a line between the 0 and the 2,000. So every line as we go up is going to be 1,000. And we're talking about dollars here. So looking at a first question, it says, how much money did Bob originally borrow? To find that out, we have to go to where he started at 0. And this is where he began, right there. And that is right at 9,000, sorry, 9,000 right there, 9,500. So Bob borrowed 9,500 when he began. How much does he owe after three months? Well, to find that out, we have to go to where the three months are, which is right here. And you have to go straight up. And you'll notice it gets to there. And you'll notice we're not quite on the line, are we? So this is going to be 7,900 and some there. Right? So we're, we're going to be 7,950 probably. Right? So there's our $7,916. That's the actual amount because I made the graph. How did you get this amount as it does not cross the lines of the graph at a nice place? Well, what we did here is we went up, found where that location was, and then we went from there straight across, and we had to estimate how many months will it take to repay half the money he borrowed? 
To find this out, the first thing we need to do is to find out how much half of what he borrowed is. He borrowed 9,500, and half of that is 4,750. 4, Let's go 4,750. There's 5,000. 4,750 is right there. Go over, and then come down. So we're looking at right around, there's the nine month halfway. So we're talking about just under nine months to do that. All right. Now, when Bob paid off, when will Bob have paid off his Aunt Petunia completely? Well, in order to get Aunt Petunia paid off completely, Bob has got to make it down to no money left. So we have to take the 9,000 and we have to go down our line and we have to figure out where is it going to end. And if you look right here, it's quite simple. It's almost exactly on 18 months. Right. Now, taking a look at these questions right here. It says, which of these questions is an interpolation? Now remember, interpolation is, the, is when you get information off the inside of the graph. Well, he still owes three months up here, and we go from zero to 18 months, so this is an interpolation. Um, and down here, how many months will it repay to take to prepay half? That's still on the graph. That's an interpolation. And when will Bob have paid off his money completely? That's 18 months, but that was beyond where the graph ended. So this is your extrapolation. So A, B, and D, right here, A, B, and D are all interpolations. And the extrapolation, of course, is question E. All right, here we go. Bob's snail rocket is training for a race. When he really gets going, he can travel according to the graph below. So let's take a look what we've got. We've got rocket's race performance, the distance in millimeters, and it is over an hour. So we can see this is one, two, three millimeters. So he's actually traveling. There's uh, one millimeter. So he's about doing a, a millimeter every hour. So predict how long it will take the rocket to run five millimeters. So grabbing our graph, there's five millimeters right there. So we just have to go over to here and come straight down. And we're looking at well, there's 4.5, 4.75, so I'm thinking maybe, what, around 4.8, 4.75 hours? Okay. How did I find the time? Well, I just showed you. I took up and went to the 5 millimeters up here. I went over to where the graph meets the line, meets the line and I came down, and I found the time down below. How far will rocket be after seven hours? So now we're talking about doing the other way. We started with distance first. Now we're going to work with this one here. So going to seven hours, right there. We're going to go straight up, and we're going to meet the graph right there. And then we're going to grab the graph, and we're going to go that way. And you'll see that we reach, there's seven millimeters, sorry, six millimeters. Here's seven. Here's 7.5. So I'm guessing somewhere around seven, four milliliters, milliliters, millimeters, okay? Assumptions are we making? Well, here we go. Well, we're assuming right off the bat that rocket doesn't get tired. Since this is a straight line in linear, that we know that rocket is traveling at a constant pace. So he starts running and he's just constant. We didn't show the acceleration down here because I guess he can go from zero to whatever speed he is in like, you know, no time at all. So here we go. He's traveling, 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 traveling. Now this stuff in here, remember, this is our interpolation. This is our interior information. If I want to go outside this, that's going to be extrapolation. So what assumptions are I making? I'm making the assumption that rocket's speed is going to stay the same throughout the race. If the race is a marathon of 15 millimeters, extrapolate how long it will take rocket. Well, going back to our graph, you'll take a look here. You'll see that 15 uh, millimeters is, is way off the graph. So we, there's no way that we can figure this out by looking at the graph. Now, I could, if I had a piece of paper, I could continue the graph and extend it. However, I have another idea, which I'm going to try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out if, the, if, the, if it is one, sorry, 15 millimeters, how long does it take him to go one millimeter? All right, well, if you take a look right now, right here, you'll see that one millimeter is right here. And if you look right there, you'll notice that this is actually right slightly above 1.1 if you look at it, right? Just slightly above. We can see that it's above, if I do a little bit of an, say, see how the line is right 
or slightly above where this line is. So I'm going to assume that that's 1.1 hours for every millimeter. 1.1 hours for every millimeter. So looking at the fact that I've got 1.1 hours for every millimeter and I've got to go 15, sorry, since I know it takes 1.1 hours per millimeter, all I have to do is multiply this by 15 millimeters. And that's going to give me 16.5 hours. All right. So it's a rough guess, but it's, it's, it's relatively accurate. So how do they get this answer? Well, I found out how long it would take rockets to travel one millimeter, and of course that was, uh, this is a typo right here, it should be 1.1 hours. Multiplied it by 15, and that gave me my 16.5. I could have extended the graph, however I didn't. Next example. Now this, this has no um, sort of problem situation with it, it's just a straight linear relation. We have our input down below, we have our output, this is our independent, this is our dependent, and it says determine each value of x for the value of y that is given. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take, pause the recording, and when y is 1, I want you to find the values of x. So pause the recording and find these three. Okay, now when y is 1, I have to take my graph, go to y, there's one, and I have to go over to here, right? And then I gotta come straight down, and you'll see that when y is one, I get a value of x, which is roughly 2.4. I can do the same thing for when y is three. Right? Back to there, come straight down, and we're talking just slightly over seven. And of course for y is four, go to four, go to the line. And you can see that it actually comes right to the very end there, so going straight down, or right here. Now, you have to be careful, because this is the distance between the two lines, and this is halfway. So we're looking at 9.5 here. Okay, now having done the y to get the x, on the next page there are three values, and I want you to do the y is equal to, sorry, the way, what the value of y is when you get x at 4, 6, and 8. So pause the recording and do that. Okay, now going back, 4, 6, and 8. So we, I'm just going to grab 4 first. Here we go. Go up to the line. Grab that line. Go here. So we're looking at approximately 1. Go to here. And then go along. So I'm guessing around 2.5. And for 8, up to here. I'm going along. There's 3.5, so 3.4 roughly. So here is my values here. Oops. So 1.75, 2.5, and 3.35 are their actual exact numbers. So we weren't exact, but we're close. Okay, so have the assignment. If you have any troubles, give me a call. If uh, Come and see me at lunchtime if you need. Okay, see you in the next lesson.